Hello everyone, my name is David. Thank you for tuning in to Monday's Q&As. I do this every single Monday. And what I'm doing is I'm answering people's questions that they asked me last Monday. If you have a question today, please everybody go down below into the comment section, ask me anything you want, and I'll answer your question next Monday in the next Q&A. That's how it works. So welcome everyone. Welcome new subscribers. Thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, I want to thank everyone for your wonderful questions and your comments and your thanks and your appreciations and all that very much it's very nice thank you for telling me i really appreciate that it's really really nice let's see i like to recommend something every week it could be all kinds of different things um this time something to watch again last couple of ones i've recommended or last couple of weeks i think i've recommended things to watch and here's something else this um isn't a healthy thing to watch or do or take and stuff like which I usually recommend help uh, try to get you guys on healthier paths and healthier roads this is something for entertainment um, I know a lot of you guys watch a lot of narcissist videos sociopath videos psychopath and and you're trying to learn as much as you can about uh, uh, people that are like your exes and family members and friends that you know that have disorders this is something else to watch that I think is interesting. It's a um, television series. They've, they're on their fourth season, and it's the, the series is called Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. I think it's wonderful. I had somebody else turn me on to it, and I want to put warning triggers on there. there there's all kinds of violence. There's sex. There's drugs. There's swearing. There's crime and all kinds of stuff, all bad stuff. I like it because the writing is incredible. Uh, the writer has to know something about personality disorders. I've said this before where I think the, the writing is so, it seems to be so disordered about disordered people, about personality disorders that I feel like the writer must have some knowledge in that area. And I feel this is the same, I feel the same about this. The leading character is, is played by Ellen Barkin, and she's amazing in this. I mean amazing. She, she portrays a sociopath better than I've ever seen anyone on television. She is the sociopath. She is a sociopathic mother and has a few boys that she turns into this huge crime syndicate, and it's really well made. I really, really enjoy it. I'm uh, in the fourth season and I think it's just gotten better and better and better where you usually most series don't tend to do that. And they are just totally outdoing themselves every year. And I think that it's going to be around for a while longer still. Um, and it's just really fun and exciting to watch. You know, the Ellen Barkin, like I said, is a total sociopath and it really goes into her whole life. It really dives into what a sociopath is. I truly believe that. And as far as her children who are, are you know, who are sick as hell and, and probably disordered, I'm not going to sit here and like psychoanalyze them or anything, but it's just interesting to watch how, um, even though this isn't real, uh, I, I, I think it really shows a situation where, you know, whole families are just ill. Whole entire families are sick and disordered and dysfunctional. Um, so if you guys are interested in, in stuff like that, feel free to go watch that. Find that on your own. Um, I'll, put, I'll try and put a link down below. I can't remember what it's on, but I'll find out and put a link somewhere in the description box for you guys to, to follow if you're interested in that. So let's get started with the questions. Um, all I ask you guys is first one first I want to say if I miss your question ask me again I'm, I'm trying to answer everyone's questions no matter what it's about I don't mind personal questions either if they're too personal I'll tell you um, please give us your locations that's all I ask is please just tell us where you're at in the world I like to know most of the people watching really like to know it really helps people feel um, validated and, and not alone so much it really helps um, so I appreciate that tell us where you're from thank you so let's get started next our first question is from RA hello I can't remember where you're from I'm sorry uh, you've been with me for a while and you've told me plenty of times I just can't remember 
Can you please tell me why narcissist mothers tend to treat their daughters horrible and intentionally break down their self-esteem while it seems they often have a sick infatuation worship of their son? I have this with my mother and I feel I have made it clear that I am not interested in hearing her constant talk about how wonderful her son is, your brother. Nothing against my brother, he can't help her behavior, but it seems the older I'm getting, the worse she is getting with continuously forcing me to hear her almost rub things in my face that she knows I find inappropriate or downright hurtful in comparing how much better my brother is as a son to her than I am as a daughter to her. This is the worst. She tells me how she calls him for love and sex advice to get a male perspective. My brother is in his late 30s and me in early 40s. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, and I was just going to say, man, your mom really, you know, no boundaries there, right? No, no, no mother son boundaries even mother-daughter boundaries. And, and, and I'll tell you right now, you know, I, I, give, I talk about parenting quite a bit, and it's hard because I'm not a parent. I don't have children, so I'm not trying to judge parents ever. Um, I definitely know how hard it is. Or I should say I know it's hard. Um, I, I believe parents need to stay parents forever. I don't think they should be friends. I, th I, think, I think children should go find their own friends and should, family should stay family, especially parents. And I'm not saying you should parent, you have to parent your child all the time as far as like being responsible for them or anything. No, it's just, don't be their friends. Let them go find their own friends. Um, we, don't, we don't cross boundaries with our children. We don't ask for sex advice. <laughs> uh, um, so why does this, con why does stuff like this happen? Could be many different reasons, right? I, I don't know. I don't know your family. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But typical, what happens with unhealthy parents that have children and very unhealthy tend to sometimes not support and promote the child's autonomous self. They be, become, you might have heard this before, extensions of them, their self. So, so a children... A child, say a, a narcissistic parent, has a child, and it'll be it'll have everything to do with them. They're not their own human being. No, this is my child. It, it'll it, it'll and what typically happens is the first child will be everything I love about myself, everything I or everything I want to be, and make, almost like my ego, everything I want other people to see. And, and then the next child might be everything I hate about myself, and those can get switched and reversed. What I'm just before getting in, instead of getting all into the family dynamics and all that, because like I said, I don't know your family. What it sounds like is she, she doesn't, she didn't help either of you be your own autonomous self. And she has kept, tried to keep you in her life for different purposes. It seems like, and most likely, People that treat other people bad are not happy with themselves. When it's their children and pinpoint behaviors like this, it's, it's usually what, how they feel about themselves. So this is what your mother, how, what you, how your mom makes you feel and the things she says that aren't good enough about you, most likely is what she hates about herself. And she doesn't think of you as, as a autonomously self person that you're here for her your son her son's here for her you see that here for me and and this is I want people I'm more proud of my son for whatever reason it typically has nothing to do with you or him being one being better or smarter or better looking or it's all in the parent something wrong with the parent a massive void in the parent so my guess is how she treats you is how, what she hates about herself and w how she treats her, your brother, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know if that's something that she wants to, she wishes she could be more like or what, I don't know. But I mean, she, she has, it seems like she has you, both of you there to serve her in one way or another. You as the kicking post, right? Attention from the sun. Right? Something like that. Just sick. Unhealthy. Didn't support your own autonomous self. Like your own a separate human being. Authentic. Genuine. No. You're here for me. I'm a narcissist. And you're in my world. Right? That's it. 
um, I'm sorry. I am. And I would create much more space than you have with her already. The more space you have with her, the less it should hurt when you do hear this or see this less frequent, right? If you don't see her for six months and then you hear it or see it, maybe it won't hurt as much. If you don't see her for a year, even less. You get my point? Who would want to be around someone like that? Treats you like that, makes you feel like that, especially your own mother. Not, I should because it's my mother. You shouldn't because it's your mother. You shouldn't take that. I wouldn't. I'd tell her, don't you ever talk to me that way. Why not? Try it. See how she reacts. She might have more respect for you, a little more. But she doesn't respect people. Anyways. Good luck. I'm sorry. Uh, Shell in Chicago. Hello, haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Do narcissists like one another? If a narcissist finds someone who is a mirror of themselves, do they rejoice or do they reject? Well, that would be like the old uh, connotations or... Um, that would be the, the false uh, sense of a narcissist, right? That they just love themselves so much and all that. No. Do they like one another? They don't really care for most people. Um, narcissists are like competition. You know? It's like, it's like two predators in the same hunting ground. I've also seen groups of narcissistic, fr you know, I want to say friends, but groups hang out with each other. I don't know. Uh, so I, do, I don't believe they rejoice. I would say more reject. That's what I've heard from narcissists telling me, that they can identify each other and they don't like themselves. They don't like each other and stay away. That's what I've been told by other narcissists, if that helps. Thank you, Shell. Good to see you again. Uh, Rustic. I don't know where you're from. Please tell us your locations, guys. Uh, thanks, David. You have a great way with words. Thank you. My question is, can we potentially pit two narcissistic abusers against one another? Like have them fight each other over us instead of abuse us? Um, I guess, why not? You, you, you can do whatever you want. Um, narcissists are problematic, typically. They will fight against each other, with each other. It's not hard, typically, to do something like that. Um, but why would you want to? That, that's not the right way to get someone to not abuse you. You're, you're talking about things like triangulation and stuff. That is abuse. So that's what separates them from us, right? If, if we're going to say someone's bad because they abuse, then we don't abuse. We let, pe we let abusers be bad people. What makes them bad? They abuse. We don't. Right? And if we ever have, we know it, we say it's wrong and we apologize and we never do it again. Right? But why would you want two narcissists fighting over you instead of abusing you? You know? But yeah, of course you can do it. Why not? I don't see why you you can't. You can do whatever you want. You can cheat, lie, and steal if you want to. It's always your choice. But I would recommend not playing around, not pitting or manipulating people, uh, no matter who they are. It'll feel better. It'll work out better for you, probably. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. If I misunderstood, I'm sorry. Just tell me, tell me or ask me again, please. Fit Mama Roberta. Hello. Good to see you. From the Bay Area. San Francisco. My question is, how do you feel having such profound impact on survivors of narcissist abuse? You have taken your story and experience to help others. Total gratitude for your work. Thanks again, David. Oh, thank you. for That's very nice to say. You're so nice, so supportive. Thank you very much. Um, it feels great. Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't make money doing these videos and stuff, so I, I do it to feel like uh, making the world a little bit better place, right? I hope. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And you said, also, I love doing my hair and nails. I recently started face mask and deep conditioning. Planning spa day soon. Awesome suggestions. 
Oh, thank you. Good. Good for you. I love it. I love it. I love it. Everything you're doing, you're, you're building up your self-worth. You're going to be worth so much that uh, narcissists will take one look at you and be like, nope, way over, way over my head. Too much for me. Worth too much for me. I can only find people that have low self-worth, not her. <laughs> Good job. Thank you for what you said. Thank you for your support. And thank you for letting people know how well you treat yourself now. 2018 music. That's it. Uh, does narcissism run in families? Sure. Yeah, it can. Definitely. I mean, this is uh, cycles. It's a cyclic. Um, think of it as, you know, like, like, like drug addiction in families. Anybody of you know drug addiction in families, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it tends to cycle itself. It, alcoholism, big time. You got the alcoholic grandfather, the son, and the grandchild. Each generation, maybe the male will be an alcoholic, right? Or, or maybe the, one of the boys won't be an alcoholic, but marry an alcoholic and have an alcoholic child. And it, is, it, it can be similar with narcissism. Um, and you said, does narcissism run in families? That's, that's a different question. And... I don't know how much narcissism runs in families as much as narcissistic personality disorder might. Where you got the father is a narcissist and the daughter ends up marrying a narcissist and maybe has a narcissist son and stuff like this. That's common because this is just unhealthy, unhealthy behaviors of people that can't take care of themselves very well can't give themselves what they need, can't provide, very dependent on people and things and addictions. And it's just sick. It's unhealthy. It's, it's the product. Narci NPD is a product of this, of abuse and neglect and stuff like this. So it's going to be very cycle, you know? Parents only teach their children what they learn. And besides abuse and stuff, what neglect is, is you aren't being taught what you need to know in life because most likely your parents weren't taught to by their parents and their parents weren't taught by their parents and their parents weren't taught by their parents and we've got to break the cycle you see and, and a lot of you now are doing that a lot of this information wasn't out there a lot of help wasn't available and so this information is helping you realize that there's a problem that's probably been going a long time in many possibly many generations in your family I would imagine because it doesn't make sense. It's not very common, that's for sure, for really healthy parents to raise narcissists. It just doesn't happen. That I mean, I'm not gonna, I can't say it doesn't happen. I just, it can't be common. It, this is unhealthiness. That's it. You know, a, a child is 10 times more willing or able to be a, a narcissist if their parents have a drug addiction or, or they fight all the time and cheating and not home and, you know, things like this. Just, man, I hope, I hope that makes sense. So does narcissism run in families? I, I would have to say absolutely. I, I, it can. Yeah. It doesn't mean it will. It doesn't mean it has to. Um, you could have, I, I've seen two really good people raise a narcissist. They just didn't know what they were doing was wrong. Just not good for the child. Hope that makes sense. Uh, Anna from Paris. Hello, Anna. I found that it's very difficult to help victims of narcissistic abuse even to open eyes. Not even speaking about escaping from the toxic relation. The only thing we can do is to remind them who they are. Maybe I'm too empathic, but often I feel the need to help the victims as I suffer a little bit with them. Do you have any idea how we can remind to people who they are and what they deserve, especially when it's difficult because of isolation. It's so difficult, Anna. It's so hard. And and if you're just asking me, what can you do for a victim who's being victimized? You know, to show their self worth. For one, tell them. For one, give them a little time of your time. Sure, things like this, you can do that. It's so difficult. It's so, it's so difficult. There's such a fine line between helping somebody and enabling 
somebody. And, and, and when it comes to self-worth and shame and things like this, we can't just tell somebody. We can't just tell somebody you shouldn't be feel ashamed for that. You're not a bad person. They shouldn't have said that to you. They shouldn't have done that to you. Things like this. You, you, you can't. This is stuff we have to work through. Somebody being victimized, presently being victimized, I don't know how they can... How, how can you cheer them up and tell them, just tell them their worth is, is up here when the person they live with tells them their worth is down here? How are you going to, you can't counter that. You know how they do it? They leave. They got to leave. They got to do something for themselves that says, I'm worth this, not that. Staying says, I'm worth that. And it won't do any good to have a friend like, no, you're not. You're not worth that. It's so small. It's such a small, quiet little voice. I hope, I, I hope that makes sense. Treat them, you know. We treat people like human beings and we listen to them and we say, I'm sorry. That always helps. I'm sorry. Most of, most of the time, we don't have to do much. Just listen and have some compassion and some empathy, you know. But, Anna, people are all on their own journeys. And we, we, can't, we can't speed them up. And we can't, we can't take, them, uh, take it away from them. And, and we can't always remove them out of situations for them. It's, these are, this is a process has many little processes and they have to go through these. It's the all part of the whole thing. We can be nice. We can offer information. We can tell them where the help is. You know, most of my, you know, if you, all of you who watch, most of my answers seem to be, hey, if you can't manage this on your own, you need help. Go get help. If I can't manage my life on my own, I'm going to go get help. If I'm not in control of my behaviors anymore and I keep being abused and I keep going back to my abuser or I keep using drugs and I, don't know, I feel like I'm out of control and I can't stop myself, what are you going to do? you got to go get that part. That's asking for help. Please help me. I need help. I screwed up. I did it for too long. I can't pull myself out. And we got to swallow our pride and, and do that. But um, as far as other people, really, there's not a whole bunch other people can really do. And because that's not what it's about. Life isn't just about stopping the bad things. And, and, it, and however you do it, either you pay for it, whether somebody else does it for you, or you just avoid it all your whole life. We gotta learn. We gotta go through these bad things, and we gotta learn why and, and what to do, and then we learn how to avoid them. That just means we don't need to do them anymore. But I'm, t I'm telling you, a lot of these bad experiences, most people go through. They needed to, obviously. They didn't need to. They wouldn't go through them anymore. That's that's why people don't go through them. They don't need to. So, it's hard to watch. I know it is. But Anna, as as you get better, as you become healthier. And, and, and you realize that, hey, you know, I went through this experience. Yes, it was horrible at the time. I'm safe now. I'm okay. And so will other people be okay. That helps stress you less. And, and also, if we can't help people and stuff, we shouldn't be around them too much. You know, I mean, like, like my job, if, if I can't help a client, then I'm going to tell them. I'm not going to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. If I, if I can't and they're too much for me or it's beyond my scope or practice or whatever, then, then, I, then I tell them, that, you know, here's where the help is. But I, I can't just keep them around and keep stressing myself out, see? And we shouldn't either. If there's people that are being abused, we may not want them in our life because they're making a choice. Whether they're conscious, aware of it or not, they're making a choice and they can make it stop, typically, okay? hope that makes sense. Thank you. Renee? Don't know where you're from. Please give us your locations, please, guys. What happens when you take something from a narcissist that they really want back? How do they usually react? Uh, they scream, cry, and hit you and take it back, right? Like a child. Um, really, 
narcissists are immature, underdeveloped children. So quite often they are they act like immature children. What what is rage? What what is you know? It's a temper tantrum. When they were children, they fell on the floor and they kicked around in circles and screamed and cried. You know. Now they go. Look, oh, I want it. I want it. I want it. Give it back to me. It's mine. You know. That's what they do now. They do, they're a little, they act a little bit older. Yeah. I don't know. I know I know some narcissists that'll smile and just go okay. And then they'll secretly ruin your life behind your back. So, they're, they're, we can't narrow down uh, exact, precise behaviors in groups of people. That's it. it doesn't work. I hope that makes sense. Um, that would be an interesting uh, project. Secretly take things in narcissists and show that you have them and see how they react. Um, Thanks for that. And I'm going to stop part one here and continue part two in a few minutes. Thank you all very much. If you can help me, what I'm trying to do is just offer information for people out there who have been abused or are being abused. And if it's not my information that helps them or saves their life, hopefully it points them in the right direction that can. So if you can just help me, guys, all I'm asking, push a couple buttons. Like the video, dislike the video, tell me why, ask a question, subscribe to the channel, share this video with somebody else, post it on social media accounts, groups and forums, stuff like that. Really, let's look out for ourselves. Let's look out for each other, all right? That's what you can do. I'm often asked, what can I do to help other people? Stuff like that. That's what you can do, okay? Thanks, guys. Love yourself first. I'll see you in part two. Bye.